And welcome back. Well, Kyle told us a little bit about his trading card collection when he was growing up. And uh, we're doing this, of course, because there is a brand new show coming to Central Coast Radio called Comp This, um, which is all about trading cards. So we thought today we would actually take a look at our pop culture trading cards. So uh, Harley, tell us a little bit about your trading cards when you were growing up and, and do you still collect today? I don't have much of a collection today. Every so often something will pop up and I start to try and collect them, but it, it just doesn't run. There was when the um Star Wars, the newer Star Wars movies were coming out, um yeah. there was a, a new set of cards released and they were in the supermarkets. So my friend and I just like would buy them up, you know, when I'd visit him and we'd stop by the supermarket or maybe I was living uh, with them at the time and um yeah so we would just like look forward as like oh we'll we'll go back to that supermarket and get some more of course there was none left so I've got this like little pile of cards with a bunch of doubles and I'm like every time I find a set that's similar it's not the same series and I'm like oh so <laughs> I don't think that that collection will ever be completed plus I hated the Disney Star Wars movies so but but it featured a lot of the the old Star Wars stuff, which was yeah. what interested me, and that's why I bought them. Um, but I kind of liked whatever that series was. I don't know what it was called now. They're over on my shelf somewhere. Um, but my earlier stuff, um, I think in the beginning, it all centered around Batman. Yes. Because yeah. it was right when the Tim Burton Batman film was about to be released, and there was all this Batmania going on. And, um, yeah, there was, uh, I don't know if you remember, there was a set of stickers. They were yes. like, like trading yep. cards, but they were actually stickers. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. and they were all, yeah, sort of like comic style. And I thought that was so cool. So I, I collected all of those and I must've had some from the Batman movie as well. I remember having the Batman returns ones. I was like ravenously obsessive about trying to get all of those. I even had the the proper binder to put them all in and everything. Um, oh, that was so much fun to get those. <laughs> and, and um, Kyle and I kind yeah. of talked about it before. Did did your school ban them? Like our, like our schools both no. banned them? Yeah. Wow. I, mm. Yeah, my school banned them because kids kept on getting bashed for their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cards. <laughs> Oh, that's something. Did I have turtle cards? I had Ninja Turtle, everything else, like everything. I don't remember having cards, though. I, if there were cards, I very probably did. Cause, yeah, you know, there, I were. there were things. definitely <laughs> cards, yep. <laughs> I don't and, remember them. I'd have to kind of see them, I think, to know. But the, I think that the most important ones for me were those Batman Returns cards because I got so close to getting, like, everything it was just a few of those special ones and i i think i had to keep searching for ages just for the last two cards of the regular set before you get to all the special like foil ones and whatever um yeah what else did i have um did you have dick tracy because dick tracy cards were pretty big at that time too oh that's right um i don't think i did uh very possibly a case of sometimes I'd pick up like a packet of something, but not end up collecting it. Um, I remember a few years later, uh, as my sort of comic enthusiasm and collections were growing, I really got into the X-Men trading cards. I think they were Fleer Ultra yes. X-Men trading cards. Oh, I loved those so much. Uh, you know, Especially, I you know, I pick up ones and they'd have like Jim Lee art on them, and I, I loved his art. I was like, oh, look at that! That's fantastic. So, trying to get a full set of those, which I never did, of course. Um, but I remember walking into a shop that you know during the the trading card craze that some kind of collectible shop. I don't know if it was just cards, but at the front they it might have even been like a cash converters type place. I can't remember, but they had collectible stuff and at the front there were a few trading card collections and there was this um little protective case with a complete set of wolverine trading cards from all the comics up to that you know mid 90s point and i 
I was allowed to get that. And I was like so happy. So, and it was like the first time I felt like I had a full set of cards only because I bought them as a full set. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, Kyle talked about that as well. There was actually a, um, a card store in Dandenong that both him and I used to go to as kids and um, they would actually do that. They'd open the boxes of cards and open all the packets and then and then sell the sets. And that was how Kyle used to go. Where Kyle and I talked about the difference in it because he used to go and do that. Whereas um, I used to get cards as a reward for for doing well at school. So my mom would go and buy like a, a packet of cards for me as a reward. So mine got collected through the packs and he's got collected through sets. But the, yeah something that we didn't talk about before that I was going to talk about because it's something that um that I'm sure Russ will be looking on at in his new show is the how much these cards are worth these days because the funny bit was they were mass produced back then these days with basketball yeah. cards and stuff they they limit how many they make but back then stuff was mass produced and a lot of people think because of that they're worthless but um, like I'm looking at a card right now in front of me, which um, is from a Skybox DC Comics Superman series that came out in 1994. And because they were mass produced, people just threw them away. Like people our age would get to 18, move out of home and just chuck them away. Because people chuck uh, them away, now even damaged cards from that set are going for like $20, $30 a card because the fact that they were mass produced, but so many of them got have ended up in landfill that now the ones that remain are actually worth a fair bit of money. That's heartbreaking because I, I never saw them as sort of going down in value. I, I knew they'd be worth something, but what kills me is that um, a lot of my stuff is just gone like i tried to hold on to everything and through other circumstances they're just gone and yeah yeah it made me quite upset i i did have a lot of the basketball cards at the time um yeah oh doctor who trading cards i actually do have a set of those sitting up on my shelf in a folder but i think the um the plastic sheets they're in aren't good quality and they may be ruining the cards so that kind of peeves me. <laughs> yeah. Well, even the basketball, um, even the basketball cards, some cards are worth more than my, um, for weird reasons. So there's a Mark Jackson, I think it's 1990, 1991 hoops, maybe, or a little bit later. Um, Mark Jackson was an okay player. His card was only worth about 10 cents. Like even when it first came out, but there's something about that card today that makes it so collectible and that is that behind him sitting in the crowd are the Mendoza brothers now oh, no. <laughs> who um, killed their parents. So that basketball card now has become a big card for being collected by people who collect true crime stuff. So this little <laughs> cent card is probably worth about $10 these days because true crime collectors want to collect that card because it's got these guys on it there is an urban legend that the photo was taken on the day that they killed their parents that is not <laughs> because it doesn't add up like when the card came out to like when they did the murder so that doesn't add up that so if someone tells you that about the card it's false but yeah, yeah there's little things like that there's also another card um another guy i think it's sam vincent um the card itself shouldn't be worth very much because he wasn't a, a big player in the nba but Michael Jordan features in that shot of him. And it's a rare card because Michael Jordan's not wearing his number 23 singlet. His singlet got ripped on that night and he's wearing a different singlet. So Michael Jordan collectors <laughs> all want that card because of the rarity of it. So yeah, there's all weird little things like that. That's crazy, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of not surprised there. Yeah. I actually just saw something um, before we started this recording. I, I was watching something, and in the 80s, apparently, there were these Masters of the Universe trading cards that yep. were all kind of scenes from the animated TV series with, like, speech bubbles on them and stuff. And just seeing those, I'm like, I want to collect them. I want them all. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, if other people out there are hearing our chat and thinking, I want to collect cards now, then uh, tune in to the brand new show that is coming to Central Coast Radio. It's called You Can't Comp This. It's coming on Sunday morning, so it's going to be a neighbor for our subculture show. So, uh, yeah, definitely tune in to You Can't Comp This, and um, Russ will look after you when it comes to card collecting. But uh, you're listening to Central Coast Radio, and we'll be back in just a moment.